Welcome to the panel breakdown in the Monkeys Fighting Robots studio. I'm your host, Matthew Sardo. This week, we are going to talk about I Hate Fairyland number one from Image Comics. This comic book was so much fun to read and so much fun to break down. But first, we have to give a little plug to our magazine. Monkeys Fighting Robots, the magazine number four, is on Kickstarter right now. We have 13 days left. So grab yourself a copy, support some indie creators, support the channel. Uh, it would be amazing if you picked up a copy. I, it's, it's amazing how far this book has come, how far I've evolved as a publisher and a creator. Um, and I can't wait for you to hold it in your hand because this book, our previous issues have gone all over the country. This book has got backers from all over the world. This little channel is growing and uh, that's because of you. So Thank you so much to everybody who's backed the book and shared the project so far. And uh, like I said, we got 13 more days. We're going to sell as many copies as we can. There's variants. There's, um, we got some different covers. You get all the back issues. We got still got some of the pins left. So check it out. It'll be in the description of the video. A link will be there. Uh, go there. Check, see all the creators. Check everything that's going on. And uh, let me know what you think. Oh, man, this cover just odd. Whoa. Every little detail I see gets better and better. I love it. And uh, welcome to the new subscribers that we have. Uh, this was a good week of new subscribers. Um, that was pretty awesome to see the subscriber count go up. We are going to do a giveaway at 1,000 subscribers. So currently we're at 880. So 120 more subscribers. And I will start pulling out some comic books to send to people, which is going to be awesome. Uh, because, yeah, you guys are making this channel happen. And I really hope you enjoy the content because I enjoy making it for you guys. All right, so I hate Fairyland. Let's talk about this cover. The white space makes it all look nice and clean and, and neat. But then you start realizing how much chaos is in this and how crazy it is. And I love this palette. I love this Easter palette for the logo. Uh, the logo was created by Nate Picos. But this right here, so you got you, you got this nice little logo here, and then you got a nice V shape, which brings you through. And like I like this, like there's a nice angle here, and this blood, I can just feel this texture. And I also like covers where like you want to like look at everything. You got these little monsters here. He's look at these. Got two different eyes, and then you see this, this nice little curve here, and you're like, okay, what's going on? This is a bottle. Got some skulls, lots of pouches. Gun, fluff off. I said on Twitter that uh, Fairyland was like a cross between uh, The Good Place and Ren and Stimpy. I didn't realize that this was like a whole series. I thought this was something new by uh, Scotty Young. But it's, I'm very excited that I, I'm very excited that I read it or glad that I read it. So Scotty Young is the cre created by and written by uh, Brett Bean is uh, the artist and uh, Jean Francois Bellou is the Dropping the color. And like I said, Nate Picos is uh, letter, lettering, logo, and uh, series designed by. So that's interesting. The big element uh, that I noticed in this book was the page turn. And I want to talk about that. And then so the three things I want to talk about are the page turn, the action sequences, and then the lack of sound effects during the action sequences, which I thought was interesting. And I want to ask you, what sounds do you add to your comic book? What voices do you hear? What music do you hear? Like I hear a lot. My brain is, is going bonkers. So I need to know if I'm going crazy. Is it just me who's making all these noises uh, with, with their imagination? Or are you doing this as well when you read your comic book? Like I can hear this moon rising and the chatter of these crazy like Jim Henson stuff has me has me filled with sound effects. It's so much fun. Okay, so the one thing that stands out so well and they did so well in this book is the page turn, and it ha almost every page has a dramatic page turn where like I'm putting my finger here and then something happens on the next page, and so if you look at this like this last panel here has a nice turn. You see this, this little triangle here. Like your eye just wants to go like this. Like you read, read, read. 
arrow goes to this eye and then your finger goes here. And so like my finger and my eye are communicating, turning this page and like, because you're doing this, you're looking here as well. And then your eye then moves up at an angle from this corner. And so if this is 90 degrees angle, this is like 45 degrees. So somewhere in here is like a nice, nice landing spot for the eye. And now we're on Gert right here. And then your eyes start floating this way to Gert. And look, here's some words, gonna put my finger on it. Get this nice thing going out. And then my eyes go right to here. And then, oh look, there's another word balloon. Pull it up, boom, payoff. There's a punchline. Okay, this one is not as much, but again, the angle of the page sets you up. So you got your words, you're looking at Gert, you're looking at your arms, but look at this angle right here, straight right here. And then boom, punchline, you're right here, brains. And then look, oh, Gert's right there. You're literally putting your fingers on the words. And you come up, another punchline. This one is in an interesting setup here. So you have your words here, and then this is the, the joke, and then your brain follows this. And then there's always like a nice little triangle there. Pull up, your eyes go straight to this person, and then your action. Here's another one. Look at the angle of the table pointing straight here. So you have your words, and you're like looking at this, and you're like, boom. Then you come up, action. Now look, words, put my fingers on the words. Head up, oh, a delayed punchline. This page has no words, just as art. And you're driving this way, which leads your head, leads your head here and the flow goes to here. But then also you have this nice little down slope here. You also have this uh, lightning, you know, pointing in this direction. You have everything moving you to this page turn. And then you slide up, boom. And then you're, it's like a page. Uh, that, oh, look again. Here's another one. Put my fingers on the words. Turning. Punchline. And that's the final punchline. Big reveal. And to be continued, put my hand on words. And start. Oh, that cover looks good. But such great use of design. It, it seems, seems very, uh, it seems very simplistic. And that everybody should be doing this. But not everybody does. And I read this book digitally and I enjoyed it. But when I read it a second time as a physical copy, I was more, I interacted with the book more and I got more absorbed in the story because of this little textural, textural movement that I was doing. I was part of making this happen. There was a lot of physical things going on between my hand and my eyes going up to these panels to where like I was creating the jokes. I was creating the punchline. I didn't realize there was a lot of, a lot of glare up there. Let's see if we can pull this down a little bit. Sorry about that. But yeah, it's, I was so part of this book because of simply just putting some word balloons in the corner. And having my brain be like, bar, and then I pick it up. And I'm like, oh shit, what's going on? Like, I was, this was such an interactive book. And it was laid out so well. Another thing I noticed is this action sequence has no sound effects. Yet my brain added everything in. Well, I'm gonna go off camera with the with the wand. But yeah, like you, you come in with this right here, nice, nice little action line, boom. And then you, I love that because if you follow the curve, it kind of swings you back up to here to her. And then this right here, this is such a slow mo. I mean, we've seen the Hulk do this to Thor. I mean, we've seen this before, but like. There's such movement here without a lot of movement lines. It's all this coloring in the background that creates this like nice movement. And then also this is slow-mo because you're like, Bleh. and this is where things get like super cartoony fun. Flip the page. And as I flip the page, I'm looking up. And so my head moving up creates a nice motion to this. 
and I'm filling in all of this like blood noise and the, you know, she says punch. I feel like this got a little lost in the colors, but that's okay. Like I definitely like can feel the motion and then like, I'm just like catching, it's like stepping on a catching bottle right here. Like, you know, this has lots of motion. And I definitely hear like a doink and like whatever her response is like. It's very, it gets very cartoonish here, but this looks very fast because of the greens and the yellows color here. Conk. And then an elbow to the head. Did I elbow? Could be an elbow. But I love this here. Still holding on to her drink. You see all the blood. You can hear, like I can hear this like nails. And a nice toss here. And then my brain fills in the crash with the garbage cans. Because we've heard this in movies before. So my brain fills in a lot of this stuff. But it's very interesting that they didn't use any sound effects for this action sequence. I'm going to send the creators a message on Twitter and ask them what was the thought process. Because I think everything works well. I mean, it could have been, could be overcrowded with all this stuff. If you had like a crunch in the background and then a squish there and, and then this, I don't know what sound effect. Doink. You know, like it's, it could be very crowded with, with, with words. And in my again, my brain fills in all of it. Like I can hear the rain in this right here. I also love the colors here. It's a solid transition from this action sequence to to the outside world, the depressing outside world. Um, also, you know, this is a technique that a lot of people use is is just using a solid color for the background and, during action, so that's your only focus is on these two characters. I'm starting to see people blur out the background a little bit too. But this is this is a great panel right here. It uses the comic, uses the page of the comic so well, you know, cause it's here you got the, and you just see the doosh, and your brain adds the motion. As you pull across, you're like, oh, he did actually punch her. But no, this is a static image, but the way your brain like moves across, you're like, you see this, and then it's, and then teeth are, teeth are flying. But this is a static image, but my brain adds so much to it. It's done so well. And it, it's clean, too. I mean, that, if you think about it, we started with, like, Mark Silvestri's work, and which is a lot of cross-hatching to show lines and action and everything. And, and so then to come up to this, which is something very clean and uses the, the colorist to create the motion you know, there's no action lines off of these chips, but I, I can see, I feel everything moving. I see her blood running. It's done so well. I th yeah, the layout and design on this book is beautiful. I'm not gonna say brilliant. I want to say brilliant, but it, it's 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 a lot of fun. So Scotty Young, Brett Bean, Jean Francois. Bellu and Nate Picos. You guys did an amazing job in this book. It was so much fun. I'm really excited to read the next one. And I might actually go back and start reading the other ones to see Gert's adventure moving forward if they're like this. Like this was, this was so much fun to read. Did you pick up I Hate Fairyland? Let me know what you think. Um, I think that's where we're going to end. You know, we talked about the action. We talked about the panel layout, we talked about the lack of lettering or for action sound effects. Yeah, I think that's we hit three solid things on this. And, and it's a fun, fast paced book. So I would, it's, it's, it's what comic books are supposed to be. You know, that's when you think about comic books, it's like superheroes and then you got like some, some darker stuff. But then there's like the fun stuff, the fun crazy that you can do with a comic book that you can't do with a lot of other mediums and this is one of them this is the fun crazy comic book guys so i'm matt sardo inside the monkeys fighting robot studio this is the panel breakdown chat with me on social media whichever one you want to use i am on them all um trying to think what else. we got that kickstarter going i'm i'm really excited for next week's books there's going to be some good stuff in there so 
this will be a lot of fun, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching and subscribing and liking and commenting. And uh, we'll see you next week.